All right, I just wanted to make a quick video on how to create a snowflake. Just the steps to get you started. And then in the next videos, I'll uh, show you how to create the slot in both halves. Um, and then all the other steps that you'll need to, to finish the project. So um, this is just to kind of get you uh, the shape or the outline of a snowflake and then how to make it into a solid. So the first thing I want to do is if you're, you happen to not be super creative or handy with the mouse in creating your own snowflake, we're going to use someone else's design, um, but you can freehand this. So if you find an image online that you want to use, you can insert that into your project to get you started. It's found on the Insert tab and click on Attach. Now I've already previously searched for an image that I could download. You'll have to do that step separate from this. So once you have it downloaded, I saved mine to the desktop. Um, I'm just going to load this one in here. So again, that's in the Insert tab. You click on the Attach button and then you can pretty much load any kind of image file. If one doesn't work, then you may have to go back and download a different, because it may be a different uh, file, file type that would work. So once you get this screen open, you just click OK. It's going to ask you where you want to insert it into your project. Um, it really doesn't matter where it's inserted, so you just click anywhere. And it's asking for the scale factor, which would mean you want it to be the original scale of the picture or do you want to increase the scale or have a fraction of the original scale I'm just gonna leave it at one which is the default and I don't really know how large this is but we can find out later so press enter alright so now this image is in my drawing and I can either do the next step now or later which would be to scale it to size um, I'm going to do that now just so I'm working with the correct size. Uh, let's see, I'm going to choose one of these. Let's pick this guy here. So this is the one that I want to kind of figure out how large it is first. So I'm going to do a distance command, D-I-S-T. press enter and then I'm going to choose a point here it's kind of just approximate from there to there so the distance is point two two eight two so it's less than one unit so basically what I want to do is scale this up and I can either take a measurement from end to end or like a radius from the center out and from end to end I want this to be a hundred units which would in this case be millimeters or from the center out to one of these arms would be 50 so I'm going to just go to the home tab press scale and I want to scale up this whole image enter. The base point doesn't really matter, that's just where it's going to scale from, so I'm going to scale from here. And then sp specify scale factor. We don't know exactly the factor, so we're going to use a reference. So I'm going to choose reference from the menu down here. And what I'm going to reference is the current measurement. So right now I'm going to scale the, the reference is going to be from this end to this end, whatever that measurement is. So now I have my reference, specify the new length. So whatever it was before, I want that distance to be 100. Press enter. It's going to scale up. Now I can verify that it scaled correctly by just doing another distance measurement, D-I-S-T, and then take a measurement from end to end, 100. So it scaled up 
correctly. So now I'm, I'm going to focus on this snowflake. And when you're making the snowflakes, the most important thing is symmetry. So we're going to start off with a center point that will be used throughout the project. So it's very important that you try to make it centered as, if possible. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it because there's nothing to snap to at this point. I click that. This circle doesn't, the size doesn't matter. You just want it to be in the center. So at this point, if it didn't look like it was centered, you could kind of, you could either remake it or try to move it. But this looks pretty close to center. And this, these arms here are lined up with my current um, work area. Uh, I could choose to try to model any of these, but since this one's lined up, I'm going to use that one. And I'm just going to rotate orbit my project. So that's straight up and down. I don't know why, it's, it's just easier for me to draw straight up and down. So I'm just going to focus on one of these. And then I'm, even from there, I'm only going to focus on one half of one of these. So first thing I want to do is make a dividing line. So I'm going to use polyline throughout this project because I want all my lines to connect. I'm going to start at the center point and then make a straight line up to the tip of this first arm. It's just a, a center guideline. Now I'm going to start tracing just the outline of half of this. And the rounded edges don't really matter to me. I'm kind of I'm just going to square them off. So you want to trace the outline. So we're going to use a polyline so that all of our every time we click it's going to be still connected. It's going to be all one polyline. So I'm going to start here at the tip. Draw out I'm just kind of roughly following the edge here. So here we have like a, it's actually a cavity, but I'll show you how this is going to work. But I'm just going to go slightly past this point to draw this out. So it's like another arm. And then to connect them, I want to go down here and then connect it back to this line here. It's very important that the starting point and the end point, you use those snaps to start and end your line. So this is all one continuous line. It's a polyline. It's already joined together. That's going to make our next steps easier. So now I need to mirror this half on the other side. So I'm going to go to the Modify group, expand it, and here's the mirror. You can always type it in as well if you want to. I'm going to click Mirror, select Objects to Mirror. I want to just select this line here, press Enter, and then specify first point of mirror line. So the mirror line is this, you know, the original line that I drew. So I'm going to, I'm going to select the end point here to begin my line, and I can just choose any point along here if I wanted to would do. I mean, you're just defining a mirror line. The length of the line doesn't matter. So I'm just going to click here at the end point just to make sure we're in line with our original line. So I'm going to click right there. Do I want to erase the source object? That would be this half. My answer to that question is no. So now I have both halves, one on either side. The next step would be to join these together. 
to create one uh, shape that has no openings in it. That's very important. So if these lines didn't join together properly, you won't be able to uh, make a region or extrude it as a solid. So we're going to go ahead and click join. I'm just going to type in join. If you like to use buttons, you're looking for this button here. That will be found again in the modify tab right here. Join. Select to the object that you want to join. I want to join this one and this one. Press enter. So now I have a solid continuous, hopefully, a continuous um, line with no breaks in it. That's called uh, watertight. So there's, there's no way that there's any breaks in it. To verify that it is, you could either try to make it into a region or you can just try to extrude it as a solid. So what I want to do now is just kind of talk about conceptually um, what you'll want to have is so this measurement from end to end is important because you're going to need to make a slot in one of these arms to fit the other half of the snowflake in it so they're going to slide into each other. So you don't want the thickness to be wider than this. So the other one, whatever width it's extruded, is going to have to slide into here. So if you extrude it too far, then you're basically going to have to cut out this whole branch. And that's not going to look good. So you want your extrusion to be less than the width of you know, one of your arms. So I need to measure the distance. The distance from here to here is 4.59, so 4.5. So I recommend that you extrude less than that width. So I had 4.5 millimeters there. So the maximum that I would want to extrude would probably be three and a half, maximum four. So there'd be a half of a millimeter of kind of wiggle room to slide the other one in here. So I'm gonna extrude it, uh, I'll, just, I'll just kind of do 3.75, that should be good. So I'm gonna extrude this as a solid. three point seven five now at this point if you don't see a solid you're probably in the wrong view option so if if you're in 2d wireframe it's gonna look like lines so you want to change your view to something 3d most of these are 3d except for wireframe I like to use shaded with edges because it still gives you a nice edge line so here's my rendition of the imported image here. And all you need to do is one branch because we're going to use polar array to get the rest of the branches here. So now I recommend that you don't use polar array until you actually have a solid because going from a polar array and trying to get a solid out of that is pretty much impossible. So you want to do the solid step first to make sure that you're working with a solid. Now you can go to the home tab and in the modify group if it doesn't look like this with the circle and all the other circles around it just click on the arrow you're probably on rectangular array. We want polar array. So Click that option select the objects that you want to array and then press enter and then specify the center that's why we have this circle here so you may have to scroll your mouse over the edge it's always better to be sure and shift hold the shift key down and right click and specify the snap that you're looking for I'm looking for the center of this circle 
And if I hover over the edge, it gives me the center. So if it doesn't automatically appear, hover over the edge of the circle. And as long as you see that snap, you can click anywhere. So now it's been arrayed, and here's the settings for the array. Now I happen to have the correct setting in there, which is six. But the default, I think, when you first use this tool is four. So that's what four little branches would look like. So it's really easy to edit the number. So if you wanted something you know, with more branches, you could do eight. Just whatever looks good to you. I'm going to stick with six. And you see how this these overlap and then create that void here. So all I needed to do was create, you know, another little arm here and it worked out perfectly. So depending on your design, um, you just want to do half of one branch, mirror it on the other side, join those two together then extrude it as a solid with a plan of how thick you want it to be able to slide into the other once you create a little groove and then you have your snowflake <clears throat> so in the, in the next video we're gonna add um, the, the slot for the other snowflake to fit inside